This is the first of a two-part video course that will walk you through the general settings of Assistance PSA. This tutorial will focus on the specific settings of your organization. After its completion, you will be able to set up the different functionalities of PSA according to your business processes, as well as to create your ledger accounts and define your sales tax tables. Note that this course is a prerequisite to the configuration of your blueprint. Also note that you will need to have full administration rights in order to complete it. Fully embedded in Dynamics CRM 2011, Assistance PSA makes use of the existing settings of CRM and only requires minimal additional configuration. Once you've installed the solution, you will only be left with defining the specific settings of your organization as well as creating your security roles and users. And best practice will recommend doing so in the order displayed here. Now, let's go in Assistance PSA to start the configuration of your organization settings. In the CRM menu, click on Settings. In the following screen, open the Assistance PSA menu and go to PSA Settings. Now, click on the record displayed here. You can only set up one organization record for your organization. We will take a look at the one already created. In the first section of the screen, you will find the naming convention of your projects. The project number prefix is determined by you and can be alphanumeric. The project number will be generated automatically, and its sequence will start by default at 1. The KPI Costs Comparison field will determine what costs will be used in a specific chart of the project modules, the KPI chart, which is delivered out of the box by Assistance PSA. In the next section, you will determine if you want Project Management Approval and or Administrative Approval on your hours. Case Management is also an option here. If you click Yes, your cases will be linked to your timesheet. The Exchange URL field will allow the connection to the Exchange server for the retrieval of your Outlook appointments into your timesheet. For more details on this field, please refer to the installation document. And finally, the Hours Entry Scope field will determine if your employees can post hourly entries to all projects or only to projects where they are team members. The Expenses section will allow you to define if you want project management approval and or administrative approval on your expenses. It will also give you the option to establish a standard price per mile for all your projects. PSA will take this price, multiply it by the distance entered at the project level, and post the result to the default travel expense item defined here. This calculation will be done automatically when an employee hits the mileage function in his or her timesheet. Note that the expense item must be part of the project's WBS in order for both the calculation and posting to be done automatically. Also note that you can overwrite the standard price per mile at the project level. To display the next section, you can use the scrolling bar at the right side of the screen or click on the link in the left side menu. You will find here the naming convention of your invoices. The invoice number prefix is determined by you and can be alphanumeric. The invoice number will be generated automatically and its sequence will start by default at 1. You will also decide here if you want an approval process on your invoices. If you have connected Assistance PSA to your financial management solution, best practice is to define specific default revenue ledger accounts. And in such a case, you will need, of course, to create them first. The fastest way to do this is to click on the drop-down menu and hit the New button. You will then access the ledger screen. From here, simply enter a code and a description. This revenue account will be used for all items that are not checked as expenses. Once you are done, click on Save and New, as you will also want to create the default revenue ledger account for your expenses. 
Back in the lookup screen, select the first account and hit OK. Now, in the default expenses ledger field, go ahead and select the other account. For more details on the integration of PSA and your financial management solution, please refer to the installation document. The Use Account Tax Groups field is the last one of this section. It will allow you to assign specific tax groups to your accounts. These groups will overwrite the tax group selected at the project item level. Note that you will need to modify your account's layout in order to display the tax field in the screen. Going to the next section, you will find the option Only Project Team Members in Planning. If this box is checked and you plan time on a project via an appointment for a specific employee and hour type, you will only be able to select an individual that is a team member of that project. If you leave this box unchecked, you will be able to select any employee of your organization. This will always be based, however, on the security rights and profile of the employee. The License section will define your access to Assistance PSA. This is where you will find, among other things, the number of limited licenses for users who only have access to the Time and Expenses module of PSA and the number of full licenses in your organization. For more details on this section, including the setup of your license key, please refer to the installation document. Finally, once you've read the End User Sublicense Agreement and checked the box Accept, save and close this window. The specific settings of your organization are almost completed. You only have two elements left to define, and they are the remaining ledger accounts for revenue recognition, if applicable, and your sales tax tables. Let's start with the first one. Go to PSA Tables and click on Ledgers. You will find here the two accounts created earlier on. If you need to create additional revenue accounts, simply hit the New button and in the next screen follow the same steps as seen before. Now, let's take a look at the sales tax tables in Assistance PSA. Whether you need to manage single tax or multiple tax scheme, PSA will require that you first define each tax individually and then assign them to a group. In order to do so, go to Tax Types and click New. We will start with the creation of a single tax type. Enter a name in the type field. If you have connected Assistance PSA with your financial backend application, you may want to select a ledger account via the drop down menu. For the purpose of this course, we will leave the field blank. You can, if you want, give a description to your tax type, but you can also choose to leave the field blank. Once you are done, you can click Save and New to create another tax type, or you can save and close the window and execute the next step which is to create a tax group for this tax type. Now click Tax Groups and hit the New button. In the following screen, enter a description and save the data, but remain in the same screen. Click the Tax Group box and hit the Add New button. Using the drop-down menu, select the tax type that you have just created. Click OK. Now enter the percentage for this tax type. The order field will indicate to PSA in what order it should calculate the tax. You must enter a value here even for a single tax type. Enter 1 and leave the Tax on Tax box unchecked. Hit the Save and Close button. Notice that now PSA displays a No in the Tax on Tax column. Click General to change the top bar ribbon. You have completed the creation of your tax group. You are now ready to create another tax type and group. This time, however, you will execute both steps from this screen. Click Save and New. You need to create a multiple tax group with a tax on tax scheme. Enter a description. And save your data, but remain in the same screen. Click the Tax Group box. And hit the Add New button. In the Tax Type field, click the drop-down menu. 
and hit New. PSA will bring you to the Tax Type screen. Define your first tax type and click Save and New to create your second tax type. Once you're done, click Save and Close. Back in the lookup window, select the first of the two tax types you've just created. Enter a percentage and type 1 in the order field. This tax will be calculated on the amount only. Check the Tax on Tax box and click Save and New. Using the drop-down menu, select your second tax code. Enter a percentage. This time in the order field, type the number 2. This tax will be calculated on the amount plus the percentage of the first tax. Check the Tax on Tax box and click Save and Close. You will now see a Yes in the Tax on Tax column. Note that if you create a multiple tax group to which the Tax on Tax scheme doesn't apply, simply leave the Tax on Tax box of each line unchecked. You have completed the creation of your second tax group. Click General and hit Save and New to create your last tax group. This time you will create a tax group for a non-taxable item. Even though no tax is applicable, PSA will still require that a tax group is created and be an option to select. Enter a description in the Name field. Since no tax will be applied, the tax group will be created without tax types. In order to complete your tax group, simply click Save and Close. In the list display of the active tax groups, you will now see the tax groups that you've just created. You have now completed the specific settings of your organization in PSA. Your next step will be to do the exercises defined in the lab, Settings.